This week's episode is about privilege and how we use it. I'm Rachel Keefe, and this is Monday's Muse. This week, I have felt appropriately called out by my friends and colleagues of color, and also by the gospel reading itself. And I acknowledge that this text, when it was written, had nothing to do with white privilege or racism, but the message is still there and it's still loud. I can't ignore it. The parable, that Jesus tells in the Gospel of Luke is about a rich man who wore regal purple robes and fine linens, and he wanted for nothing. And at his gate was a a poor man named Lazarus who had wounds all over his body, and he was hungry and thirsty and just camped out at the gate to the rich person's house until he died. And then shortly after Lazarus died and was comforted, in his afterlife, the rich man also died and he was tormented. And in his torment, even then he demanded that Lazarus, the poor man who spent his life at his gate, go and get him water. And when he was told that couldn't happen, he said, well, at least then let Lazarus go and warn my brothers so that they don't meet the same fate. Really? The brothers had been warned enough by Moses and by the prophets. So much so that even if one were to rise from the dead, they still wouldn't change their ways. That's us. That's people with skin like mine. The words of the prophets are clear everywhere. There are people crying out for justice. Black lives matter. They matter or should matter, just as much as white lives do. The prophets of today are crying out for justice, for dismantling the systems of racism that make it so that one person is more likely to be killed because of the color of their skin than someone whose skin is white. We can't deny that these are prophetic words. They are consistent with the prophets of old. Care for the widows, the orphans, the poor among you. Love one another as I have loved you. If we call ourselves Christians, we have a responsibility to walk in the path of love. And it's not a passive path. It's not a path where we sit around and study the Bible and talk about what should change. It's a path that gets us out of our doors, on our feet, making it impossible for politicians and people in power to keep doing things as they have always been done. Changing our minds, changing our hearts, changing what we do to make sure that one day others have the same privilege, not more, not less, but all are truly equal as they are now in the sight of God. As many other people have said, and some pretty famous ones at that, there's no such thing as other people's kids. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.